Hey guys, for this video, we're going to put together this solder five shelf bookcase I recently picked up on Amazon. This is the oiled oak finish, although there were other finishes available. So just so you know, the box is about 92 pounds, so be prepared for that when you have to get it into your house. We're going to get this thing all put together, see what it looks like when it's finished, and uh, give you some dimensions at the end. See what we think about it. For the hardware that's included, it's one big sheet with individual pouches that have their numbers on them, so you should be able to find all your pieces easily. Some say empty right on them. Then we also get the straps. You can bolt it to the wall in case you're worried about um, it flip, tipping over on somebody, I guess. And then we also have the instructions. For assembly, it says we need a Phillips number two screwdriver. We're going to need a hammer, a nail holder that's provided, and a tape measure. Our first step is going to be putting this M20 molding on the E3 board. We're using the 9S screws, which are labeled right in the bag. 9S. They look like that. So we're going to put those three screws in, and then we're going to use these plugs that are 14P and plug where our, our screws just went in. You'll notice the board has some pre-drilled holes. So we're just going to line our molding up with those holes. And it's a good idea to get all three of your screws started before tightening any of them down. Remember, you're tightening into particle board, so now is not the time for the strongman contest. Just get it nice and, and tight. Don't get it too tight. And here are your three plugs that we're going to push into these holes just to hide the screw holes. And they're just going to push in like that, all three spots. For step two, we're going to get boards A3 and B3. Each of them get two hidden cams and the dowel. They're marked 1F and 2F. This is what they look like. We'll put them in. Notice the hidden cams have that arrow. You're going to put it in here with the arrow facing towards this edge where there's a hole here. Just push it in like that. And then your hidden cam, the metal end there, it's going to push in just like so. And you're going to do that here and here on both the A and B board. On to step three, we're still working with board A3 and B3. This time we're going to slide this K molding on the notched edge. It says the bottom edge of both the molding and the board should be even. So the bottom is the opposite side of where we just put in those cams. As far as I can tell, molding K isn't marked anywhere. So I think it's this one. It's the longest in the package and there's two of them which we need to and it's just going to slide on those boards. Notice this groove doesn't go down the center it's on the one side the overhang portion of this goes on the side with all those holes on that board so you'll see here in a second but we're just going to slide it over this groove Till it hits the floor. We're good there. See, overhang, side with the holes. For the next step, we're going to put together those three pieces that we've been playing with. So we have A3 and B3 on the sides. E3 is on the top. And if you look how it's connected, our moldings we just did are going to be along the floor with the holes for adjusting the shelves towards the inside. On E3, we have this molding across the bottom and our four hidden cams or cam dowels are going to go into holes on E3 and then we're going to tighten these cams. So these dowels here on B3 and A3 are supposed to go into this hole right here and then you tighten the cam. Now right into my first little snag because this lip right here will sit on top here for it to push in and I'm hitting the molding here so that the dowel is too high and it's not going to fit in the hole. So I'm going to take those caps off, loosen these screws a little bit so this thing can move around a little, put the cams in, tighten it down, and then retighten these screws. Little bit of change of plans. Hey, we're learning as we go. So these plugs look incredibly difficult to take out without getting a screwdriver and scratching up the surface or whatever. So 
I was able to get it to fit by just grabbing here and pushing kind of harder than I wanted to downward on this molding and getting those to drop in. And I already tightened the cams on this side. Just be very careful standing up like this because a slight push this way, and I'm guessing it would break pretty easily. Uh, so, knowing what I know now, I wouldn't put these caps in just yet because that made things more difficult. Got the other side in. Now, when you tighten these cams, it's about a three quarters turn in the tightening motion, and you'll feel when it stops. But make sure you go uh, almost a full circle so that they're locked in completely. Also part of step four is putting the safety strap in E3. There's a hole there and a separate package with the safety strap, but that's what the instructions say about it. I'm not doing that part. For the next step, we're attaching G3 to the bottom of A3 and B3, and it's gonna use four of these big boy screws. They are labeled 113S. And when you're putting on G3, make sure these three holes are along the bottom towards the floor. A little life tip here. Make sure you're going in the right holes. The inner hole, the bottom hole in this sense, instance, is where the screw goes through. That doesn't go all the way through. And then at the bottom, it's going to be the upper hole. So it's the inside holes that we're going through. And you'll notice there's a pre-drilled hole and what we're screwing into. So make sure you go in there so you don't split this wood here. And again, it's a good idea to get all four started before you tighten down any one screw. Now we'll get the other side started, then tighten them all down. So that's where we're at so far, and we're ready to move on to step six. Step six is like a multi-step step. We're getting new pieces out. We need C2 and D2, and we're going to do the same four cams along the edges with the little dowel. Remember the metal end going into the cam. So let's do that portion first. I have C2 and D2 here. Again, we're just pushing this guy in, the arrow facing this hole there. And we're going to drop this guy right inside there. Give it a little push. And we're going to do that four total times. For the next part of step six, we're sliding these moldings onto the notched edge of C2 and D2. They say they're labeled P. Mine aren't labeled, but there are going to be two that are the same size. That's what you're using. Remember, we have our holes for the adjustable shelves here, and the overhang of that molding is going to be on that side. It says you want the molding and the shelf, or this board, um, even at the bottom edge. It's calling this the top edge, so the side opposite of the cams will be the bottom. You want it even along this bottom here. So I got this first one already on. And we'll move on to the second. Now I'm going to go out on a limb and say this is easier to do with two hands, but we'll see how it goes here. And there you go. The last step for step six is these angled brackets along the bottom. There is a pre-drilled hole in C2 and D2. And here's what your little plastic guys look like. And you're using screws labeled 1S. They look like that. It says you're only using two screws in this step. So I'm assuming you're only screwing to the board, C2 and D2. So there's our pre-drilled hole. We're just gonna slap that guy there and put the screw in, tighten it down, one for each board. On to step seven, 
these two pieces we were just playing with are going to connect to the bottom of that G3 board. It does say to place something underneath here for support. For support, place packing foam and magazines. So your magazine collection finally coming in useful. It looks like we're also going to slide these moldings up to where they butt into G3. And again, your adjustable shelving holes are going to be facing inward. So good thing I didn't break up all my packaging materials. We got one foamy holding up the top portion that we built a while ago. And then we have another foamy holding our new side piece. So we're just out here rolling with the foamies. We're going to put our dowels inside the pre-drilled holes in the bottom of this board. And we have to tighten our cams. One down. And we'll do the same thing to the other side. Both of the side pieces are now on and tighten the cams. And remember to slide your molding here all the way up till it butts up to the bottom of, what was that, G? Whatever that board is, till it hits that one. Congratulations, you have made it to step eight. Here we're going to use three angled brackets and we're going to attach this skirt to the front of G3. It says the skirt is O. I don't see no label on it, but it just looks like this and it's got this groove and the screws will go into the groove. So you got to position it so uh, it looks like the groove goes towards the top, goes that way. And these are your three angled brackets and you're using the 1S screws which are those guys there you're going to be using a total of six of those I got the three angled brackets all in I got the screws tight enough that the bracket will hold its position but loose enough that I can still move it we'll go back and retighten things once we see exactly how this next piece is supposed to sit working on putting the screws in the groove of this thing now, one, I'd like it to be a little tighter fit. That seems pretty loose. Obviously, I don't have the screw tight yet, but a lot of left to right movement on this piece. And they say the screw will start into the groove, and I guess that's technically true, but it's going to take 20 minutes. <laughs> Exaggerating a little bit. But, yeah, I guess it does start to screw eventually. It's a good forearm workout. Normally, I would never grab a power tool for this kind of furniture because I'd be afraid of breaking it, but I'm on the cusp for this one. Got it all tightened down. After I got all three of these screws tightened, I just kind of felt underneath with my hand here to make sure this piece was flush with the shelf that it's getting screwed into, and then tighten these ones up here. On to step nine, this time we're grabbing board F, and we're gonna start with our four hidden cams in each of the corners, and also putting our dowels in there. Here is board F, and as we've seen before, you push our little cams in, and then put the dowel in on top of it afterwards. You have two on top, two on bottom. For the next step, we're going to use our last three plastic angled brackets and three of our 1S screws, and these go right along the edge here. There's going to be some pre-drilled holes we'll find. We spotted our three holes. We're just going to put the brackets on like this. I'm going to get them snug about the same as I did the previous step. I'm not going to tighten it down until I know exactly what's going on with this. And for the next step, we're going to attach F to the sides of D2 and C2. We have those four hidden cams that are going to get tightened, so you see they face downward. So F is going to look like that, and we're going to tighten our four cams. And these two. Next we're attaching the M46 molding. Looks like this guy right here. To the five angled brackets using again the 1S screws. And this does have pre-drilled holes that you'll be lining up. So that's what that part looks like. Make sure you get them all started first and then go back and tighten everything down. 
for this step, we're going to start putting the back panel on. This really is your greatest potential for messing something up when building this thing, so pay attention to what you're doing here. We have the larger back panel that unfolds, and you're going to place it on the back of your bookshelf. The top edge says must be even, so you're going to make it flush up here. And then it comes with a little nail holder, so the nail goes through that center hole right there and you got these little tabs on the bottom and you can see how you hold it and that gives you your spacing so you're in the middle of each edge of the board we'll show you in a second so another graphic says they want you to stay an inch and a half off the corners and then your spacing is going to be five and a half inches between each nail and for now we're just going to go along the top edge all right, putting on the top portion of the back panel. So you want this piece flush with this piece all the way down before we start nailing anything. Also left to right, you can see this has a little lip that it's going to sit inside of. If you can't get this, these two pieces to sit flush all the way across, then this thing's not completely square. And you can kind of nudge it halfway down there on either side to square it up so you can get that to sit right. So remember, we're an inch and a half off of this corner. Tape's upside down, but you get it. So we're starting right here. We're gonna use our nail holder. And you remember the little lip right there is gonna go up against the edge. So at an inch and a half, we're going right there with the nail and we'll tap it in. First nails in, we're going to go all the way across the top at five and a half inch intervals, making sure we stay flush as we go. And that's what it'll look like when the top panel is all nailed down. Now we're going to go down each side again an inch and a half off the corner, five and a half inch spacing between the nails. With the nail holder, you got your little bead guy, the little tab sticking out down there, and it says to put it between this lip here and that guy so it's just gonna sit like that now you can see I got quite a gap up top and then it goes down to basically nothing towards the bottom so for this portion here I'm gonna cheat it and push it all the way back so you can see how much it can move I can push it forward or push it back I'm gonna bring it back because I'm afraid of going too deep and busting out the side of of the panel there so we're gonna pull it back this way Got this side all buttoned down and we're going to do the exact same thing to the other side. We're going to do the same thing with the bottom back panel. Back panel, we're going to sit it flush with the bottom of the cabinet. Do those nails first and the exact same thing up the sides using our little nail holder. The seam here between the top and bottom back pieces is going to have a little bit of a gap and eventually we're going to get to these screws that are going to go there. But let's get our nails in first, along the bottom, then up the sides. Got the nails around the three edges for the bottom piece. Now we got to put these three black screws in. So we're going to put one right down the middle seam here, as you see I got that. And then the next two, we're just going to split the difference between this screw and the edge here. So, you know, somewhere right there. And then on the other side, do the same thing. We're just putting it right in the middle of the board, so the head of the screw catches a little bit of both pieces and those three screws are in ready to go all right now we're able to stand it up get our first look at it now we just have to put our shelves together put these moldings on the shelves so those are your three J's that are left and the three molding brackets and they slide on just like the stuff did before And you're going to need this basically centered because it's going to go between the moldings on this guy there. But let's get all three of those shelves moldings put on. Next we have a bunch of these little plastic hidden cam covers. A little dome shape on one side with a peg on the other. And the peg goes right through the middle of these hidden cams. You can see the one on the right I already have in. So you have two up here. You have two up here. And then up underneath here, you have two there and two on this side there. 
once we get all those cam plugs in, we can start putting in our pegs for the adjustable shells. I'm just going to go to the middle for each one so we can get an idea what that looks like. But obviously these things just kind of push in nice and easy. Got our first shelf sitting in place. Just have to make sure this molding is centered on it so it sits nice and pretty like. We got two more to put in. And here's what our finished product looks like. Right to left, that is 35 and a quarter. Front to back, 12 inches. The height is 69 and 13 sixteenths. Now, of course, the shelves are adjustable, but when in the middle positions, you get 11 and a half inches. 11 and a half inches you could fit between each one. So there it is, all built. Thanks for watching.